It is said that those who have yet to subscribe to this channel will be sacrificed at Snake Mountain. Welcome to another episode of Frankie D Crafter, the channel where we craft our own world. This week, we'll be talking about Snake Mountain, and no, that's not what I call it in game. We'll be doing a show and tell video before the actual tutorial video, just to give you a heads up on what we'll be working on. In this video, I'll be talking about the final results and my thoughts going through the project. I'll also be talking about some challenges I faced while going through the project itself and some of the materials I used. Don't forget to like, share, and favorite as it goes a long way for the growth of the channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, this is the perfect time to do so. I'll be having the tutorial for how to make this and the painting tutorial posted up soon after this. Also, don't get sacrificed. Let's get started. To start off, let's say that this has to be the biggest project to date. This monument stands smack in the middle of the rot and the goblin territory, literally being the only thing that stands between the rot taking over and spreading to the rest of the world. Let's get started on talking about the actual craft. The sculpture is mainly built out of plaster, air dry clay, and sculpt mold. There are other materials obviously, but I'll cover those in the actual tutorial video. Let me show you what goes into planning something as complex as this. Are you ready? This is a Frankie D Crafter exclusive here. You won't get this anywhere else. Let me show you the blueprints. Alright, as you can tell here, I doodled a mountain and then I put a snake on it and then I was like, you know what? Let me draw the snake better. Let's see. See? As you can tell, most of what I do is improvised. I figure it out as I go. The issue with this process is that it's hard to then translate that into a tutorial. I guess I'll figure that out as I go as well. Let's start showing off some of the hidden mechanics of this build. I knew I wanted to make the inside playable for a lot of reasons. The first one being that I could also separate the floor and use them individually. I'll explain this a bit better later in the video. Don't just the lights, they're just stand-ins for when I actually craft my own. If you need help with crafting your own torches, I'll leave some links in the description below. There are some amazing crafters out there that can explain this so much better than me. As you can tell we have a nice inside space that is about 5 inches by 6 inches, decorated by some bases. Link to that video also in the description below. There are three main points of interest being the openings. The front acts more of a window towards the entrance of the actual cave. This is where I'll station archers. The other is the stairway that connects the snake path to the second floor. I want to make this level the armory. I just need to craft some weapon racks and stuff. The purpose of the mountain is to be a stronghold against the rock. At the same time, they are also making sure that no explorer wanders into the rock. This has created a rumor that the goblins are hoarding a treasure in this secret land of theirs, resulting in the greedy attempting to raid into the rock. Jokes on them. <laughs> Let's move on to the next level, or the level below. Level 1. Let's take a look. Let's start at the far end and work our way to the front. Let's start with the big boy that was sent to me by Crafts and Minis, another channel here on YouTube. A channel I feel like you should definitely check out after you're done here. I just painted this slightly to get more of that rot look to them, to make sure it fits with the rest of my minions. Speaking about my minions, there they go. Again, I'll be posting up links in the description below for your convenience if there's anything you would like to build yourself. The palm trees are just there to give this a tropical look. The palm trees are also something I covered, so you know the spiel. Let's move on to something we haven't covered yet. These pillars with the skulls and the snakes. Let's just do a quick tutorial here. All you need is a base, which for me are these wooden one inch bases and the perfect looking beads. Important. Because that swirly design that sold me on them. Put the skulls, glue everything together with super glue. Paint it. 
boom call it a day the reason why i chose this really is for the swirly design it's that simple now for the snakes these were also sent to me by crafts and minis i'm going to do an unboxing video i promise i got a lot of goodies in this box but the reason why i bring this up is because when i craft I like to look at everything around me and see what I can use for the build. That means wandering into your box of shame and digging up on painted minis. What are some of the issues I face while crafting this epic tower of awesomeness? Well, staying humble was the biggest obstacle here, since now I have unlocked a higher level of crafting unknown to the rest of the world, but me. But seriously, I had some issues. But nothing too big. The first issue I ran into was basing this massive monster or mountain. You know what I mean? I planned to just layer the crap out of the cardboard but soon realized that was a stupid idea. I figured I'd use MDF ports instead. I did all my cuts and sanding outside with a face mask since I know this thing is kind of harmful to your lungs and we don't want none of that right now. The other issue I had was that I decided to test out my homemade sculptor mold on this particular project because I love to torture myself. The issue here was that it just wasn't that great. The best thing about sculptor mold is that it dries fast and hard while also staying relatively lightweight. The batch I made did none of that. It took forever to dry, it wasn't as hard, and it was noticeably heavier than the regular sculptor mold. Luckily, I only used it on the bottom level. Another material I decided to switch to was plaster instead of bark. Although I do love the idea of collecting bark on my hikes, the reality is that plaster is just an easier option for me while also staying relatively cheap. Bark does have one upside that I feel can't be beat. It is by far the lightest material out of everything I tried. Texture wise, it's also extremely interesting. I don't expect to drop the material altogether since it does have its upsides. And if you decide to use bark yourself, just make sure to sanitize the material before crafting with it. The last issue I faced while crafting this was by taking a chance with the clay I knew was bad. Don't get me wrong, I don't think cheap air dry clay is bad. It has its uses. For example, I use Crayola air dry clay that I know will crack on the tiles of the mountain. Despite this being the only time where it didn't actually crack that much, oh well, I knew it was gonna be a gamble. On the other hand, I had this brand that I just absolutely love. Polyform air dry clay, white. It doesn't even feel like your typical clay when you craft with it. I ran out of this clay when I got to the top level of the temple and noticed a deal on Amazon, where I was able to get three packages for a great price. When I got this clay, I noticed that the packaging was off. There was a second layer of plastic, which I've never seen in this brand. Then I noticed the color was all off. And lastly, the fill of the clay was completely off. There are three red flags I chose to ignore because, and get off my back. This clay ended up cracking worse than anything I've had ever worked with. Wish that I would have used that clay on the floor. Point being, if you know what a material tends to do, utilize that something. Like Kraftnik says, you gotta let the material do what it do. That he says is so much better. Please check his channel out, he cracks me up. And if you know how a material is supposed to feel, look and taste, and something is off, please return it and save yourself a headache. Let's talk about the purpose of the craft. The main goal for me was to create a unique piece of terrain that could potentially see multiple uses and encounters. The issue with this way of thinking is, the more unique something tends to be, the likelihood of you using it in different encounters is significantly reduced. Let's take this build for instance. How often do you think you'll use Snake Mountain? Not very often I presume. The goal in mind was to make the different levels playable on their own. I can use this bottom half as a bandit's hideout. The great thing about the first level and the second level is that they can be entrances to caves. Although admittedly, the second floor is the hardest one to reuse. The third floor has to be the easiest. 
I run all my games in the same world, but not all my games take place in the same era. Sometimes part of the fun for my players is to try to figure out what era they are in and whether they can meet up with past characters that they have played as before, or figuring out if those characters are even alive, or figuring out how they died. My point here, I can use this temple in a storyline farther into the future where only the top of the temple is above ground. There is no reason to keep the rot at bay anymore. Some adventurers long ago battled against the embodiment of the rot and figured out a way to actually seal it. Or the rot won and now this is all that stands as a monument to represent the beginning of the end. What I'm trying to say is don't let the idea of how many times you can use something stop you from building something you really want to build. If you think usage is going to be an issue, then plan ahead and tackle those obstacles. As DMs, we tend to improvise a lot. Why not apply that same logic to your crafts? And lastly, if you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces, please consider donating to the Frankie D Crafter Patreon page. It's because of the support from this awesome people that I am able to keep the channel going. Please comment on ways you would use the craft and what other goodies you would add to it. And if you can't wait for the next episode, there's a lot of other videos in my channel you can check out before then. Alright guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.